So in this problem, we're told a baseball is seen to pass upward by a window 23 meters above the street with a vertical speed of 14 meters per second. If the ball was thrown from the street, A, what was its initial speed? B, what altitude does it reach? C, when was it thrown? And D, when does it reach the street again? So in this problem, we're going to be solving for a bunch of things, but let's try and understand what's going on. So we know we have this window that is 23 meters above the street. So and we know the ball is going to be thrown from the bottom of the street upwards. Uh, and so it's going to go upwards. And we know once it passes by the window, it's going to be going 14 meters per second. So I think the easiest way to solve these is just by um, breaking down each one. So we're going to start with A. So A is what was its initial speed? So if I write down my givens, and the way I like to do it is by writing down every single variable and deciding what we have. So uh, since we're working along this way, I'm going to say it's the y direction. So uh, we have the variables delta y, the initial velocity, the final velocity, acceleration, and time. So these are our main five variables. And so what we're going to be solving for is initial velocity. They tell us uh, what was its initial speed. So I know this is what we're solving for, and I'm going to need to determine what variables we have based on the question. So I know the change in the y from here to the end of our interval is going to be 23 meters because that's what we're uh, increasing. I know that the final velocity at the, the end of this 23 meter interval is 14 meters per second. So let's also write that for the final velocity. Acceleration in free falling, uh, free -falling problems like this is always minus 9.8 meters per second squared uh, minus because it points downwards the acceleration which is just the acceleration due to gravity. That's why it's 9.8, it's a constant. And then the time we also don't know, but we won't be using it. So uh, I know I have final velocity, acceleration, and delta y. So I needed a kinematic equation that has all these variables to solve for initial velocity. So the equation we're gonna use is this one right here, v squared equals v sub zero squared plus two a times delta y. So you should have all your uh, kinematic equations just written out in front of you. Uh, it's useful when solving these problems and the one we're going to use is this one right here, this one. So plugging it in, we know final velocity is 14 squared is equal to v sub 0 squared plus 2 times a, which is minus 9.8, and then multiplying that by delta y, which is 23. And so notice that we have all the variables here except for the initial velocity, with, which is what we're solving for. So uh, that's going to be that. And let's go ahead and solve for it. So, uh, right, we just plug in the final velocity, the uh, acceleration, and then the delta y. So, uh, multiplying these out, we have 14 squared, which is 196, is equal to v sub 0 squared plus, and then let's do this, 2 times minus 9.8 times 23. So, this is going to be minus 450.8. Adding this to the other side to solve for v sub 0. So 196 plus 450.8 is 646.8 equals the initial velocity squared. Uh, squaring it, or squaring both sides to get v, the initial velocity by itself. Uh, just second square root this value. And so you're going to find that it equals 25.43. So 25.43 meters per second. That's going to go ahead and be your uh, initial velocity. So uh, that's going to be our answer to A. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, cool. So, uh, yeah, so there's that. Now what we want to do is go ahead and move on to B. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so answering B, B is asking us to find uh, the altitude that it reaches. So if we look at the problem here, we know it's going to be thrown up and it's going to go up, 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 up. And then eventually it's going to hit some uh, maximum point, right? We don't know where that is yet. And it's going to fall down like that after reaching its max. But what we want to find is this altitude. So we're essentially going to be solving for the change in y here. So 
whatever the change in y is of this distance. So keep that in mind. So I always like to write down our given again uh, whenever doing a kinematic problem. So we're going to write down our variables for this one. So again, delta y, v sub 0, v, uh, and then we have a and t. So, so delta y is what we're going to be solving for in this one because we're trying to find how high it goes. So delta y is that, so we'll say it equals question mark. The initial velocity we know from the last problem. So we know we're throwing it with this speed. So the initial velocity is here. And then what is the final velocity at this interval? So at the maximum points it reaches, so delta y is the change in this. So we're finding the velocity here, which is its maximum point. You need to know that the velocity at the maximum point is always equal to zero. Because at the very maximum point, it's no longer moving upwards. It's basically frozen. So the, the value is basically zero. Acceleration in free falling problems is the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and then time we don't know, but we only need these three again. So we're going to use the same equation as last time, except for we're going to solve for the other variable. So uh, 2a delta y, the reason we're using this is because we know a, we know uh, v sub zero, and we know v. So we can solve for delta y. So plugging it in, uh, this is just zero squared. So zero equals 25.43 squared plus 2 times uh, a, which is minus 9.8, times delta y. So all we would do is minus this the other side, 25.43, or sorry, yeah, minus 25.43, this value squared, uh, and then you would divide by 2 times minus 9.8 equals your delta y. So all I did was uh, get that in terms of delta y. So 25.43 squared divided by 2 times uh, 9.8. So you'll get that it equals 32.99 uh, meters because we're dealing with uh, uh, delta y, right, which is measured in uh, meters since we're using the standard units here. Uh, so basically 33 meters we're going to call it. Uh, and yeah, so we know the change in y or how high it's going to go is 33 meters. So this is its altitude that it's going to reach. Okay, cool. So that's that. Now let's go ahead and move on to C. So for C, we're trying to find when it was thrown. And so this is phrased a little weird, but I think what they're looking for is how far or how much before was it thrown relative to this point. So what we're going to find is basically how much time this took right here and the way we're going to do that is well there's many ways to do it uh, the way i'm going to do it is um, by using this equation right here so we're using the same variables as the initial one except for we're just going to be solving for t because t is how long this took right which is what we're trying to find how long it took to go from here to here which is going to be how long before that happens it was thrown hopefully that makes sense and um, yeah, so the equation I'm going to use is this one right here, v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. So final velocity equals initial velocity plus a times t. And the reason we're using that is because I know all the variables. I know the final velocity is 14 meters per second. I know the initial is what it was thrown at, 25.43, plus a, which is uh, the acceleration due to gravity, we already know that, minus 9.8, and then times t, so what we're solving for the time. And this will give us how long this took, uh, and that's going to be basically how long before it was thrown. So 14 minus 25.43, right? So all I'm doing is multiplying or uh, subtracting this from that side, and then I would divide by minus 9.8. So what we have here is 14 minus 25.43 divided by minus 9.8. So go ahead and do that you'll find that t equals 1.166 seconds, or about 1.2 seconds. So this is going to be your answer to C. So when, uh, when was it thrown? About 1.2 seconds before uh, it crosses this, crosses the window. So that's going to be your answer to C. Now let's go ahead and move on to D. So D is going to be, when does it reach the street again? So the way we're going to do this one is a little different. Um, the trick to knowing this one is, 
So wind is going to reach the street. So if I throw a ball up like this, and then it comes back down, the trick is to know if you can find how long this takes just to go up to the top, the amount of time it takes to come all the way down is just twice that. So it basically takes the same amount of time to go up than it does down. So we just have to solve for uh, the, this time interval here to go from this to this, or just to go up, and then we're going to multiply it by 2 to get the total time. Um, and yeah, so uh, let's see. So we're going to use this equation again, but once again, we're going to use this right here, but we're going to use these kinematic variables because this interval, if you remember, is based on it reaching the top. So that's why we're using these. So once again, the final velocity at the top is zero. The initial velocity was 25.43 and then minus 9.8, which is the acceleration and then multiplying it by the time. So really, it's just going to be minus 25.43 divided by 9.8, or minus 9.8. All I did was move this to the other side, and then divide. So 25.43 divided by 9.8, that's going to give you t equals 2.5948. So multiplying this by 2 gives us 5.1897. Let me zoom out a bit if you can't see that. So about 5.2 seconds. So keep in mind this T, what we solved for was the time it took to go up. And then the time it takes for it to travel down is the same amount of time. So just multiplying it by 2, uh, that's going to give us 5.2 seconds. So uh, yeah, so uh, that's going to be your answer for this is D right here. Sorry if the C is a little bit confusing. Uh, but this was your answer to D. Uh, this was your answer to C right here. So 1.2 seconds before. Uh, it's kind of phrasing it weird. It says, when does it reach the street again? So just know that it's 5.2 seconds after we throw it. Or if you just subtracted 5.2 from the 1.2, it would happen about 4 seconds after that. It would reach the street again. So four seconds after. You can write it however you want. Just uh, make sure you understand uh, how the question's phrasing it. Uh, but yeah, so uh, these are going to be all your answers. Keep in mind, this is a little different because it's four seconds after. So just keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And hopefully you uh, found this useful.